Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're all doing good. Sorry we were a little bit late today. I blame two things, my dad and the microphone. Uh, the microphone wasn't working when I turned everything on, so I had to debug that a little bit, but we got everything rolling, and I'm super excited. So who's ready to make a paper towel holder? I think this is going to be a pretty fun project. I've been looking forward to it all week. Uh, so let me switch camera views, and we'll show you the... That's not the right one. That one. Show you the blank that we're going to be turning. So I got it mounted on a glue block. Uh, that's actually something I forgot to do today. I'll be putting a, a, a short and a reel up, uh, just showing you how I got this thing mounted. But we got this as the base, and then this is going to be the, uh, whatever you call it, the rod thing that holds the, the paper towel holder. And I did measure this. I was, I was kind of curious. I wasn't sure what the dimensions were going to end up being on the the actual rod piece we i'm going for one and a half i just want to drill a one and a half inch hole using a forstner bit and this is actually a little bit over uh it's just just about 10 10 to 15 thou over uh one and a half and so i'm going to turn that down just a little bit but really i'm not I'm, i may round over um you know like the the end of this thing or something like that but uh, we're not really going to do a whole lot of, of work on the actual rod. Uh, mainly, we're just going to turn this, and frankly, there's not going to be a lot of work to do on this. Um, I kind of want it to be fairly similar to this with a few little things. Uh, I'm probably going to put a little bit of a chamfer on maybe the top and the bottom, and then maybe like a little design line kind of thing, groove on the side, maybe two. I don't know. We'll have to kind of see. I haven't thought about this that much um, on the design. but. Pretty much, we're going for pretty simple today. It should probably not take that long. I want to make sure that I get this thing done and see if our concept works. Um, that's more important to me on this project, this specific project, um, than anything else. Um, but we got some pretty cool colors. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the colors, um, I did my best to try and get them poured to where they weren't really bleeding that much, but they kind of bled a little bit, it looks like. But a lot of times the outsides and the top of the blank do not really indicate what's going on on the inside. So the problem is I'm not really going to be turning away a lot of material on this. So we may be kind of stuck with what's on the outsides. Um, just something to think about when you're pouring blanks and you're not going to take a lot of material off. Whatever's on the outside of your mold is going to be a little bit more prevalent. So just kind of something when you're pouring uh, resins. Uh, you kind of need to think, you know, how's this actually going to be in the end? Um, you may get super crazy with swirls and all these kind of cool things going on in the middle, but if you don't turn into that and see it, you're kind of hosed. So I just wanted to kind of mention that before we <laughs> began. So let's see, who was here first? Mike McEwen was here first. Nice. And we got Jeff and Dominic and Hugh and Mark and Nathaniel from Australia. Nice. That's cool. I liked Australia. I, I got to visit Australia. My, my wife was, uh, she did a semester of college down there. Um, I think they call it, I think everybody else on the, on the planet calls it university or uni. Um, so it was pretty cool. I got to go and, and kind of see a little bit of Australia. We also went to New Zealand, um, but it was really cool down there. All the people were really, really awesome. Who else we got here? CJ's Hobbies. And Paul's here. Tim's here. Nice. Mamie's here. Yeah, blue. <laughs> yeah, we got a little bit. The other thing is when I poured it, so it, it, this is one of the toughest things with resin casting. When you're sw constantly switching uh, between different types of pours, um, you know, like, like recently, a lot of what I've been pouring Alumilite Clear uh, into is these molds. And what I've found is these vertical molds, especially three quarter inch, very thin um, pours, when you're pouring very small amounts at once, it doesn't bleed that much. I'm pouring at like 90 degrees, um, you know, resin temperature, and it's only 67 degrees in my shop. So it's like really low temperature that I'm pouring at, but I'm getting perfectly good results. But then when you get into like a larger, um, you know, even even like a brick, um, I, I'm usually pouring at like 100, um, and I could probably go even a little bit higher right now. Um, with just like a brick of, of pen blanks. Uh, and then with what we poured, you know, we were pouring a pretty big round kind of, you know, thing, even though we kind of let it drip down that stick, 
you know, I probably could have waited even longer, um, like maybe 110, 105, 110. Uh, I don't know exactly what time, what temperature I poured at, but you got to kind of play around with these things a little bit sometime. Yeah, so Tim's asking what temp, it, it depends. It depends on the, the temperature in your shop. It depends on the resin you're using. It depends on the mold size. And on top of it, like the technique, you know, how are you pouring it? Are you dumping it? Are you barely, you know, like <laughs> there's so many things that go into that. Generally, you want to be above 95 with Alumilite Clear Slow for, for most things, regardless of the temperature in the shop. Um, and it can go up to, I mean, in the summer, I'm, I'll pour it like 130 sometimes. Um, and the, the thing about that, the shop temperature, that dictates what, um, you know, this stuff sitting on, on my uh, counter is the Lumalite Clear Slow. It doesn't really matter what resin, but, um, you know, 67 degrees in the jug, the resin's going to be thicker starting out. Uh, when it's 85 in the shop, this stuff is a lot thinner and you have to wait to, to, to get to a higher temperature uh, before it really kind of thickens up. So you just got to kind of play around with it. Generally, you don't want to wait too long because it can start setting up on you while you're pouring it. But, you know, somewhere in the middle where it's, you know, thickened up and, and you're pouring, depending on your technique, that's the temperature you want to pour at. So let's see here. Who else is here? Jay's here in Arizona. Nice. Hampton. Nice. Stew's here, sweet, all right. So uh, let's, I think, get things fired up over at the lathe and start turning this. Like I said, this, this is not gonna be some you know amazing turning <laughs> process. I'm gonna go for a pretty simple design. It pretty much, I mean, I gotta be honest, I could have popped this thing out of the mold and drilled a hole in it and, and been done uh, for what I want this thing for. It's gonna be a, a utilitarian shop thing. But what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna true up that, that outside edge so it's, it's nice and, and running kind of concentric or whatever, true. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put a, a little relief on the bottom just to make it look a little bit lighter uh, feeling. Uh, that's kind of a trick that you can use for um, different types of things. If you wanna make something look a little bit lighter, um, you can just put like a little bit of a chamfer on the bottom, on the base of something, and it just makes it look a little bit lighter than, than like a big brick thing that where the sides go all the way down to the tabletop or wh wherever it's sitting on. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of that. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do a chamfer on the bottom and then just kind of do a, a little bit of a round over on the top edge just to make it nice and kind of smooth, something that you want to touch. You know, you're going to be kind of fingers are going to be going near there. So I'd rather have something kind of round and soft like that. And then, like I said, I'm just going to put, I think we'll go with like two little grooves, basically. I'll just get the detail tool out, put, put a couple of grooves on the side just to get, add a little detail. And that's about it. And then at the end, I'm just going to drill. I'm also going to, you know, face off the, the top face. Uh, but then drill a hole one and a half inches and then we're, we'll be done with it. Uh, and then I'm going to have to chuck up the other blank and then just bring one end down to one and a half inches uh, diameter. And then I'm just going to round over the top of the other side. So it should be a pretty simple turning, I think. Uh, let's see. So let's, uh, Kid Cooper's here. What's up, man? Oh, nice, nice. Steven's here too. Cool. All right. So let's get over to the Canon camera. Get on the lathe, get this thing spinning around. <clears throat> Add a little bit of light to the situation. All right, and so like I said, I just put this thing on a glue block. I don't have much room here. We got cords and tangles and stuff. <laughs> oh man, here we go. Uh, just got it on a glue block. I just used some five minute epoxy. Uh, I am going to post a short. I actually did get, oh, my camera's falling over. I did get some video footage of that, so I'll just do a, it's like a vertical, just a quick thing. Basically, um, just glue it up and then you can uh, find center on the, the front and use the lathe as a clamp. So it's really easy gluing these things up. Um, <clears throat> get my live center going here. And we'll be ready. Ready to rock and roll. Oh, I need to open up my phone so I can see the chat. So what's everybody working on in their shops? Anything cool going on? Uh, let's see here. Where's the YouTube app? Um, my channel. There we are. There we are. Okay. 
And Brian's here too. How's it going? All right, so I'm just going to use the Easy Wood tools. I use this for almost everything. Uh, the CI3 or the, it's the mini finisher to just kind of true everything up. Um, probably switch over to a square bit so that I can come in and, and put a little chamfer on the bottom here. And then we'll just true up the face and everything will be good to go. And you know what's crazy? I lost my, I lost a, totally lost a pair of um, glasses, protective eyewear. <laughs> looking all over the shop for it haven't found it yet she hated me put I, i'm sure it was one of those things where i took them off real quick put them down for some reason in the wrong place in a place that i'm never going to look at for them maddening okay so we got our dust collector ready okay let's do this All day demo by Nick Agard. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's a good reason not to show up, I must say. Get me in the face. All right, I'm gonna put a face mask on, mainly just because these shavings are just smacking me right in the face. Almost got this thing trued up on the outsides. Um, the bottom of this, there is some glue. This is where we hot glued. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Can you? Maybe. It's a little bit of a kind of a chip. That's another good reason to put a chamfer there because I can get rid of that. Um, so just think about that. You know, depending on your tolerances on the final piece, um, if you have like hot glue or other stuff sitting in your mold, it's going to be in your blank also. I want to try and keep as much material on this thing as possible. Um, I don't really want to take a ton off. So <clears throat> I'm going to use all the tricks that I, that I know to kind of not have to get rid of material basically. So just a little, a couple more passes here. I'm going to take a little bit more material off. This is looking kind of cool on the, on the outside now. a lot of different colors. This thing's like super rainbow colored. Yeah, it is it's totally psychedelic. I love it. So we got it totally concentric, trued up <clears throat> on the outside there. And then, like I said, I'm just going to put a little bit of a round over on this, on the top end, and then I'm just, we're just going to kind of come in and cut this. Now, this thing's really sharp, so I'm just going to take some material off with the round cutter, and then I'm going to come back in with a, uh, a square cutter. Yeah, Alumilite's my favorite. <laughs> It, it turns really well uh, compared to a lot of the other ones, too. Alright, 
so we got all the sharp stuff off there let's come around and put a little bit of a round over on the front Covered in shavings. Oh, <laughs> camera's getting covered too. Dust collection doesn't work on everything. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to kind of pick my angle. Good. Then I'm gonna come in, coming in on the bottom. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. I'll part that off at the end, but just to get that pretty good. Okay, so everything's going pretty, pretty easy here. <clears throat> Not a lot of turning going to happen today, I don't think. Which is good. So really, uh, I think one of the cool things about this project is it's super quick. You know, it's a simple project. I'm going to put you guys on mute real quick and I'm going to dust myself off here. Scoot you guys back. Take that off. Get a different tool rest going here. We can put you guys probably on this side actually. Yeah, the, the clear slow is pretty good. Uh, no, I'd say that it's uh, it's all about the same. I mean, prices at this point across the board are pretty similar. I, th I think in most cases, um, it's not significantly more than anything else for sure. Um, and in some cases it's probably cheaper than some of the deep pours out there. Man, some of those things are pretty expensive. It's just epoxy. Um, <laughs> I got resin on the camera, I know. <laughs> I know, it gets all over the place. Uh, let's see here. Two six-year-olds in the audience. That's cool. Sweet sounds of the arrows. 
Well, actually, what I was doing was I was like dusting myself off, and I, I did that once, and I'm pretty sure I was smacking the, the microphone, which I don't think anybody wants to hear. So we're going to be drilling out the center, you know, the centermost part of this anyway. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the top edge. Pretty much got it like flattened out, so. in the center. It's getting flat. All right, I think that's about it. I'm gonna sand this thing up. Uh, I didn't really mess around with trying to get everything totally perfect, so we'll start at like 180 grit. A little bit lower than uh, on pens, I can usually get a little bit smoother surface, but with pens. So I'm going to use some Abranet. I'm going to drop the speed down. I'm also, you know, some people's lathes may not go in reverse. I find it a lot easier to sand on the top of larger things this way. Um, the, other, the other way you would do it, nor like normal, you'd have to be under it. And I can't see what I'm doing, and it's a little bit harder to push up than push down on something. Oops. So I like, if your lathe can go in reverse, it's a nice handy kind of feature to save your your arms and everything. <clears throat> Zool, how's it going? Might have to take another cut on this chamfer. Yeah. I have to clean that up with the tool. <clears throat> now, another thing you can do is use one of them, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the inertia sanders, those things work pretty, pretty darn well. 
Got to find a 180 grit piece of sandpaper, but somewhere in here. There we go. There's one. Going in reverse, so it's kind of odd. It's a little bit different than I usually do. Let's let's see if I can do this better and forward. Not too shabby. I'm gonna have to take another cut on the back side of this thing because it's just not really it's a weird line. I don't know if I can get above the blank to see this cut. Maybe. Let's see how that goes. In fact. My tool rest moved on me. That's not good. That's not good at all. <clears throat> Gotta lock your tool rest down, guys. I gotta do some more work on this thing. Let's pull out a negative rake square. Man, I'm, I'm eating shavings today. <laughs> Face mask isn't doing a dang thing. Okay. I think we're back in business now, guys. Whew. Yeah, that woke me up for sure. <laughs> I was like, what? What was that? Nice. All right. So that kind of illustrates the difference between stand because I was using a regular cutter. I like the regular cutters to try and come in and just you know get like a, a very square edge. 
Um, the, the negative rakes are, are like radius. So just a little bit of radius, two, like a two degree or something, I don't know, whatever, two inch radius on it. But I can sit here and play with this and I'm not gonna get a catch like that with a negative rake cutter, like at all. So. It just makes life a little bit easier. All right, so we're gonna switch up to the 240 grit. And this inertia sander is working really well. You can also use like a, a you know, like a drill if you wanted. Those work pretty good. Uh, my the big thing about the, and, and there's like a whole handle, but I find this is a lot easier just to grab with the, <laughs> the little tiny extension part. Am I on camera? Yeah. Um, so I took off the handle part because it's just I can control it a lot better. But I like these a little bit better than the than drills because they don't make any noise, you know? Uh, one thing I was going to do, uh, it's always good to wipe off your, your blank with denatured alcohol. I'm going to quickly blow myself off so I'm not putting shavings into the, the sanding part. There we go. So let me go get some denatured alcohol. We'll wipe this blank down. Man, I haven't turned anything besides a pen for a long time. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. So first I blow it off and then we'll take a paper towel. Get that wet. This just gets rid of any dust or any uh, grit particles that may have come off while we were sanding. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, that's how sandpaper works. It's not like it's, you know, like this grit that just stays intact. The way it works is the grit particles on your sandpaper break down and little bits, you know, kind of crack off. And that's why it keeps on, you know, sanding stuff, it keeps a fresh edge on all the particles so you know essentially if you don't wipe off you know in between grits you could contaminate you know get like 240 grit particles that you know even though i've moved up to like 400 there could be 240 grit particles that you're you're you know sanding into the blank so you always want to wipe off your blank in between grits just to make sure Center is always the hardest to, to get going. Not even sure if I was on camera there. Let's move the camera back a little bit. Let's actually move it over here. That'll give you a good view of everything. All right, I think we're good with 240. We'll blow it off and then we'll wipe it off. Some alcohol. Oh, actually, I gotta get the center. I didn't really sand the center of the blank very well. So I just take the little pad out. I 
looks like I still have a few tool marks, so I'm just going to give it a little extra. I'm not particularly worried about the looks of this because it's going to be a shop project and it's also kind of a proof of concept. However, I think I do want to make another one if this works out the way that I'm hoping. I want to do another one that's actually clear and embed stuff in it. I think that would be a totally killer project uh, to have a clear, you know, a clear base that has, you know, something in it that you've, you've you know, cast into it. Pretty sweet. All right, so that's all cleaned up. So we'll move up to 400 grit. And uh, the inertia sander, I don't know if anybody has commented on this. Hey, Ann's here, how's it going? Let's see here. Oh, that's not what I want. Outside the barn, how's it going? Oh, Kim's line dancing again, have fun. Okay, I don't think I missed it. Um, the inertia sander, I bought this from, uh, shoot, what is the name of that company? Uh, hold on, Woodturner's Wonders. It's kind of expensive, and I think you could probably just kind of make your own even, but so far, and all I have is there's like a whole handle uh, that goes with this thing, but I just use this little tiny thing. I think you could probably just, because you can buy these parts, you know, on their own. And if you could just figure out a way to fit a bearing into something, you could just like make your own little handle like this for very cheap. Tool rest is in the way. I will say the nice thing about drills is you don't really have to worry about the angle or, or any kind of technique. This thing, you gotta kind of find the right angle to get it spinning and doing its thing. So it can be, and then the center's just kind of useless because it's not spinning fast enough. So it can be a little bit of a pain, but sometimes. Drills are a little bit more straightforward, but they're usually loud. And sometimes you gotta plug them in. I think we're gonna go, I, I think I have an 800 grit. I think on this one, that might not be a bad idea. Let's see, do I, oh, I got a 600. Yeah, 400, 600 we'll go to next. Dinner time. Dinner time's a good reason to leave too. I love dinner. I'm pretty much into every meal, for the most part.
All right, do a little bit of 600 grit. And then I'm kind of thinking maybe, I don't know, Easy Wood Tools sent me. A lot of you guys that have been around for a while know that I have never really been a huge fan of Yorkshire grit, but Easy Wood Tools sent me some and I'm like, well, maybe I should give it another shot. We might do a little Yorkshire on this one. Typically I would uh, probably go to, I would probably wet sand this, you know, with the, after 400 grit, I would go to the Zona papers, do like the first two or three, and then just buff. Let's see what the Yorkshire grit stuff does. I do not have any updates on Andy Berkey myself. All right, let's see here. We need, I'm gonna wipe it off with a little denatured alcohol. And then we'll try applying some Yorkshire grit. <clears throat> I got both the the base one and the the micro fine or whatever they call it. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. No promises. Uh, I like Yorkshire grit for wood, mostly. Um, that's another thing. I, I don't think that it's particularly awesome for just resin, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what let's see what we get out of it. Uh, and again, in this case, I'm not really going. It doesn't need to be like a mirror polish. Dang, I can't even get this stuff open. Got some kind of electrical tape on this thing. Doesn't want to come off. There we go. Well. All right, I got it open. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, thanks, Mamie, I appreciate it. So this is just like an abrasive paste for anybody that doesn't know what Yorkshire grit is. It's got some uh, oils and waxes and grit particles and all kinds of stuff. There's a few other uh, like brands of this stuff. Uh, to be honest, I've, I've gotten pretty good results from the Triple E, the E E E. What's it called? Ultra Shine. This stuff works pretty decent. I use this on uh, the the Star Wars, the X-wing sphere. 
and I got pretty good results and it just has to do with the grit particle for some reason in it but let's let's see what this Yorkshire grit does I haven't used it for a while rub it in good and then we'll give it a spin see what we get um, I just find that usually I get better results buffing I get like a, a higher gloss doing my normal you know like I said I would do a couple of uh, polishing papers the um, Zona papers and then move over to the buffing wheels whoa almost lost my stuff Give it a shot. Maybe I was just a little impatient before. Turn it down to apply. It's going about a thousand. Seems to be working pretty decent. I don't know. Well, I've only sanded to 600 so far, so if it goes to 1,000... And I would say that this would be the next progression, and then the microfine. I just, in the past, I, 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 there's always been scratches left. Buff, the buffing wheels generally get those out. It, it's kind of like the same thing as doing triple E buffing wheels and white diamond. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing as buffing, but I, I've just been doing buffing longer. So I kind of got better results. Now on hybrid blanks, like I, I don't know that I would, all, you know, totally suggest doing this on just a resin blank like this, but on hybrid blanks, then this, you know, the waxes and oils will, will shine up the, the wood, you know, so, but that's looking okay. It's not bad. It just depends on how perfect, you know, how, what your technique is with this stuff and how perfect you want the, the surface to look. I think a lot of it also has to do with how good of a sanding job you did. If you're leaving a bunch of sanding scratches in it, then this stuff is not going to take it out, you know. So it just just kind of depends. Everything just depends. All right, I think that's I think I've worked it in pretty well at this point. Swipe off the excess here. That's not looking too bad. I don't really have any complaints about that. I don't know. I think I'm going to grab another fresh towel and just try and wipe off. See if I can wipe off anything else here. Make sure I get all the this initial grit off of the blank. Flip this over and we'll go to the microfine. See how that goes. Uh, if you don't have buffing wheels, then this would be a you know a decent option. I don't think I'd recommend magic juice because you'd need to go through a lot of it. <laughs> you know, it's just I mean they sell bigger bottles of it, but I don't know that it'd be very economical. That stuff's best for like pens and you know, stoppers and things. All right, let's give this a shot now. Yeah, can you guys see, you guys can see. Let's, let's, let's move the camera around a little bit. 
Ah, the legs are getting stuck on me. All right, let me unplug the... <laughs> let me unplug it. There we go. Now you can see. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good. I, I'm not seeing a bunch of scratches in it. No complaints here. I mean, you guys already kind of saw the front. It's not... Let me see if I can get some more light on the front. I am liking the colors of this blank. Um, like I said, I wasn't sure what we were going to get exactly. But yeah, that's looking pretty cool. We got some of that uh, the, the fluorescent pink right there. Crazy colors. I love it. Alright, so let's... <clears throat> Apply some microfine. So in essence, this should just make it even better. I'm guessing. I don't know. Not entirely certain how much you're supposed to apply. I figure more is probably better than not enough. You can always wipe some off. Alright, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> you love the gold? How's the gold looking? You know, the pro my only issue is it doesn't, well, there's a little bit of a clump there, but it, it just kind of ends up, the particles just end up everywhere. So you could just, like, it, it just looks like you added a bunch of gold glitter to everything. I would want, like, gold veins. I, I still haven't been able to get, like, like, veins of that stuff, you know? I think that's my disappointment with it. Because I want it to be, like, like a dye or something where, you know, we're doing color swirls. But that stuff ends up just kind of dispersing throughout the blank. I don't think that I've got, like I said, t my timing and the temperature when I poured lately hasn't really been on, like on point with that stuff. So I think that might also have something to do with it. Now I'm using a paper towel, so we've we've kind of talked about the abrasiveness of paper towels a lot, which. I'm actually going to switch over to the blue paper towel because I, I know for a fact that's less abrasive than what I was just using the Scott paper or is it Scott Bounty? It's just tough to on something this large. It's tough to find something that's non-abrasive that's also not going to you know possibly get bound up on the the blank and be dangerous, you know. So, these are decent. Still haven't found a, like a paper towel like this that, that will rip that is like non-abrasive. White Scotch-Brite? Yeah. Are they non-abrasive or just not very abrasive? I might have to look into that. Getting a little bit of a mirror polish here, it looks like. Let's see. Let's stop it and see how it looks. Oh! It's looking pretty good. I think the instructions generally recommend that you buff after using the uh, Yorkshire grid anyway. That was another reason why I was like, okay, if I got a buff anyway, why not just buff and move on? But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. That turned out pretty good. I'm not like disappointed, you know? I also think those uh, that, that inertia sander tends to not leave um, 
I don't know, I don't leave scratches as much when I use that thing. And I would say the like drills are probably the same. I don't know what it is, but it just seems if I'm doing it by hand, I, I tend to like maybe press harder or something like that. I, I leave more scratches in it. So, you never know. I also think it does help to do like kind of a cross grain, you know, if it's spinning. The nice thing about the inertia sander is it's almost like a random orbit sander where it's a random pattern. Um, but on the, on the side, you know, I, there may be a few little scratches. So you might come with that pad and just do some like little uh, circles at the end with each grit. If you're finding that you're getting scratches, yeah, I can see scratches. Yeah, I don't know. Still got scratches on the side there. But overall, it's looking pretty good. All right, so at this point, I just need to drill a one and a half inch hole in the center here. That's easy enough with a Forstner bit. And if I can find my Forstner bits, there we go. One and a half. I think I'm going to move you guys onto the other side real quick. I think there's something on the screen there. In the lens. Hopefully that got it. All right, so we're swapping out for the, the drill chuck. And the, so the blank is about two inches thick. So I think I'm just gonna go in about, I don't know. I want enough, I don't know. I'll probably go in like an inch or so. Let's just see where that puts us. get a sharp. I'm going to put a mark on my Forstner bit real quick so I know when to stop about. Doesn't have to be perfect at an inch. It's not that important. <clears throat> at about an inch right there. Alright, now all I've got to do is part it off.
<laughs> the gold Austin Powers, that's funny. Yeah, I've gotten pretty good results with that Triple E Ultra Shine stuff. We make a few good products, that brand. We got a friction polish. I don't know if that's what maybe the what the wax is. All right. <clears throat> Dust the face mask off. And Um, and I'll tell you what, guys, I am extremely happy with the new parting tool from Easy Wood Tools. So I had their original version, which I'm gonna be honest, it kind of sucked. This thing is amazing. It's got a little bit of a, a negative rake to it, um, but it, it just works extremely well. And one thing that I've also found, uh, and this is gonna depend on, well, you know, replacement cutters are not particularly cheap for these things and you got to replace this entire bar however if you've got a cbn style wheel <clears throat> i don't think i would do this on a regular grinder because it's a carbide um you know it's carbide is what what this what the actual cutter is made out of not high speed steel <clears throat> but if you've got a cbn wheel on your grinder, which I would highly recommend. They're way better than, I mean, let me just pull the camera over. Hold on a minute. I can't remember what CBN stands for, but if, you, if you're gonna do any kind of grinding on, on turning tools or anything like that, highly recommend switching to these. They don't ever have to be retrued. They last forever basically, but you can also sharpen that parting tool um, cutter with the CBN wheel so you can get a lot more life out of this cutter than normal Let's see I think all I did was I just stuck the tool in there and I and I, I didn't even turn it on I actually just rotated this by hand and I put a new edge on and it's working pretty good so far because it was pretty dull um, I forget what I was using to, to part stuff but it, it, it got pretty dull um, and so I ended up, I actually bought a new cutter and then I'm like, well, I already have the new cutter. So if I break or if I, you know, damage this thing by trying to sharpen it on the CBN wheel, like whatever, you know, <clears throat> and I sharpened it and it worked out great. So, uh, but like I said, I don't think that you can really get away with just using a standard grinder for carbide. All right, here we go.
All right, we're gonna call that close enough and we're gonna sand, or I mean sand, saw the rest off. Kind of hard to sand that off. <clears throat> Cubic boron nitrate, there we go. I'm gonna have to do a little work on this thing in the bottom. I've got some work to do. I'm just gonna go take it over to the, the sander real quick. You guys can follow along. A little bit. I could like rechuck it and do all that, but I think it'll be just as easy just to sand it off. Kind of the brute force way of doing it, but it also takes two seconds. So we got everything nice and cleaned up on the bottom. I'm not gonna worry, uh, let me take my mask off. I'm not gonna worry about polishing this because I'm actually gonna cover it with a, uh, like a non-stick pad, non-slip pad. So, and I think I'm gonna probably end up switching it out, but I, I bought some of this shelf liner stuff and I'm, what I would normally do is, is hit this with a little bit of like just a spray adhesive, hit the, you know, like the bottom of the blank with like a spray adhesive and then just stick it on there. I'm going to see how this works. Um, I've got a better idea. I just couldn't find it um, in any of the stores around here. Let me turn the dust collector off. So let me, let's see what the chat's saying here. Shallow wax, yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> a new pen. <laughs> we'll get back to pens in a little bit. Grinding carbide on, eh, well, I'm not grinding. Like I said, I'm doing it by hand. I, I think it's okay. 
Diamond is better if you have a diamond wheel, but what's those blanks? Oh, those are just blanks for uh, for the website stuff. Nothing special. Okay, so let's see here. First thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to clean up the face of this glue block so it's ready to go next time. Um, what? So I, I was talking about the the liner. There, there's like so. There's like a gel kind of non-stick stuff that's like a silicone kind of. Like this stuff, this, so this is silicone from like, like excess from a, a mold. Like stuff is not gonna slip on, on a material like this. Um, the problem with those shelf liners is they're just like basically a foam. And I find that if they get dusty or, I don't know, anything, they're not particularly non-slip. So we'll have to see how it works with a little bit of weight on it. I'm just gonna cut out a circle, stick the thing on it, and just kind of see how it, it works. But I'm gonna try and find that. I've seen the, there's like like little gel pad things. Um, I actually was, I was doing a quick search earlier today. And they actually market some of them as, um, like car, things like you stick it on your car dashboard and like your phone won't slide off. Like it's super sticky kind of stuff, but it's not like it's like abrasive or actually, you know, has anything sticky on it. It's just like a silicone type material. All right, so let's clean this thing up and then we'll, what we're gonna do is just kind of chuck up this other blank. I guess the camera's not even looking at anything right now. Um, we'll, we'll chuck up the other blank, and like I said, I'm just going to put a about a one inch, um, you know, get, get this down to one and a half inches diameter for about, you know, one inch of this, the length of this thing, and then just put kind of a round over on the top. But I like to kind of clean up these glue blocks as quick as I can so that when I need to glue something up, it's ready to go. See how bad this face is. I think it's pretty concave. Uh, no, it's actually not too bad. Okay, looking pretty good. Too bad. I'll take it. Okay. Alan's a little late. That's okay. We got the the, the base piece done. <clears throat> Everything went pretty well. I had one catch. Wasn't my fault totally. Well, it was, but I didn't lock the tool rest down, <laughs> so it moved. Tool rest post slid down and I got a little bit of a catch, but it was on the bottom side and I fixed it real quick. So here is the base of our paper towel holder. That's looking pretty sweet, huh? We used Yorkshire grit today, not too bad. I can still see some scratches in this thing, which I think I could get out with the buffing wheels, but I also didn't really, you know, admittedly I was kind of just rushing the, the sanding as well. I didn't go over it with a fine tooth comb. All right, so let's get our easy chuck jaws switched out. 
I gotta think about it. Let's see. So we'll just go with these ones. Might end up. I'm, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna protect the. Maybe just wrap it with like a paper towel or something, so it doesn't dent the heck out of the blank. Doesn't really matter to me that much, but. I think I'd rather do it that way. I could put it between centers. Or, you know, like, just take some of that off. Let's see. So this one's got a little dimple in it, this end. So I think that's the, the end that I want to be glued into the, the base. And then we'll flip it around and we'll just roll this over. Now, one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed with and I just don't really want to mess with it because most of the blank is is pretty pretty clear. There's like, I don't know what this is, but there's like a little mark from the mold. Eh, what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna take that material off, so yeah, that'll work pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. I'm just gonna mark the center of this other end really quickly. I got this handy center finding doohickey. Makes things easy. and all kinds of tools. What, what happened to my... Huh. There it is, okay. <clears throat> Come on. There we go. Get in the hole. So first thing I'm going to do is mark this thing at a, about an inch. Let me let me just take the depth measurement on this on the actual base itself just to make sure. So it's just over an inch. So where's my good sharpie? Man, everything is just missing today. What's going on? Who stole my good Sharpie? Well, hopefully this one will work. Now we can see how far we need to go. Next thing I need to do is get an inch and a half marked off on my calipers. 
it's right where I put it, I know. Well, every once in a while, my dad moves things around. It's funny because usually it's like the dad who's like, put my tools back, where they, where you got them? Not so in my family. I'm the one going, where's the tools? Where'd you put it? All right, we got our calipers set. Not a lot to take off, honestly. It's it's like this thing came out at like one and three eighths or something, or one and five eighths, and we need to take it down to one and a half. So just a little bit of trimming to do, and we'll be good to go. Now I don't know if you guys can see anything. Nope. Put you guys back a little bit. There we go. Look at that rod. Isn't that cool? That's cool looking, I think. Still got a ways. You got a dozen of them, yeah. I know. Well, and I'm so cheap that I won't just go get a new one out. I got. I know where the ones, the the unused, the unopened ones are. I'm also just a little stubborn because I'm like, I know I have a, a perfectly good one, you know. chattery it's another thing I'm gonna have to kind of contend with it's a pretty long you know rod of material and plastics don't really have a lot of tensile strength like wood There we go. 
All right, let's see how I did. <clears throat> Woo. I think it might fit. Let's uh, let's test it out. See if we can get this thing to fit into the the mortise on the base. So it fits. I might have messed up the measurement a little bit there. <clears throat> I think I'm going to take off just a little bit of the end of this thing at the table saw. I kind of messed up that measurement, but it's not a big deal. Okay, now let's see how this thing fits. Ah, that's perfect. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we'll flip this guy around. I'm gonna grab it by the whole tenon. Just like that. I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna go with a live center. 60 degree cone style. Cause I've got a dimple in there already. Kinda. It's not 60 degrees though. That's okay. All I'm gonna do is just round this thing over a little bit. <clears throat> Thing running, eh, it's kind of wobbly. Kind of wobbly. That's okay. We'll just round her over. I might have a little bit of trouble. I'm not sure that I can really do a lot of work on this thing without like a, a steady rest setup. So we might have to just kind of sort of round this over and kind of move on because I think this thing's just going to wobble around if I get rid of the, the actual support so we'll just do what we can like I said kind of a proof of concept not a big deal Well, yeah, but I mean, not that long compared to a bowl is what I was kind of thinking in my head about that. This is a lot more stuff to do than a pen.
I just want to see how this thing... I gotta be honest, that's good enough for me. I don't really mind the the dimple in the top and it doesn't need to be perfect, but I wanted it to be kind of so that it would, you know, go, so when you put the paper towel roll on, it'll kind of go down onto it. Um, I think I'm just going to try sanding it like four, I'm going to try sanding it 400 real quick and then we'll just hit it with a little bit of Yorkshire grit. I don't even know if this is going to work. Not really. I'm not particularly worried about what this thing looks like. <clears throat> Let's see if we can just skip to the micro fine. See what happens. I'm skipping steps, guys. It's always good to find out, you know? Well, yeah, I, but I did say that, you know, it was going to be quick. But like I said, like compared to like a normal larger project, I mean, turning a bowl would be multiple weeks in most cases. Because you just can't turn resin very fast, you know. Like, like larger objects like that. I'm not very fast at turning anyway. That is why I'm not a production pen maker. Because I would starve. Yeah, that looks fine. Good enough for what we're doing. Okay. Who's ready to put this thing together and see what it looks like? And test it out, I guess, most importantly. Bring you guys over to this area oh we got here's something i can share with you guys um so when i did that uh the, you know the weekend in, with uh in phoenix um elise who i who she's with starry nights resins starry night resins um she mentioned that there's these little paddle mixers that work well in things like you know 32 ounce mixing cups so they're smaller so they fit compared to the only ones that i had found previously were the big red ones and if you're trying to like, I mean, you could maybe fit it in like a paint mixing cup, but not really. I mean, it's not, you know, these things though, they'll fit into, you know, small, your smaller cups. And for the most part, I mean, I would just mix stuff by hand. It's not that big of a deal. Hold on real quick. I'm going to blow myself off here. However, there are some mica powders that are a bear to mix in and especially if you're just doing it by hand um, a paddle mixer would be a lot better um, for certain things like that uh, so that's pretty cool and another thing is that i can share show and tell before we put this together i got a t the tenon cutter from uh turner's warehouse uh, this you use this to cut tenons on on uh, uh you know your your bespoke pens and stuff it, when you're going to put threads on it it's going to save me a ton of ton of time. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to learn how all that stuff works and I'll share some stuff, but I need to figure out how, how it all works first before I share anything. All right, let's get this thing out of here. So 
Can you guys see? Are you guys, are we on camera here? Oh. Oh man. So let's get a paper towel. We're, we're gonna epoxy that in. Oh, I don't need a piece of paper towel. I need a paper towel roll. Let's go get the paper towel roll. Oh man. Heck, I don't even need to epoxy it in probably. Boom, look at that. Oh, and it works. It doesn't even slide eh, a little bit, but it's heavy enough to where I could just, oh, that's nice. That is awesome. So we'll see if this stuff does anything, but I think I might come back and find something a little bit more like silicone. All right, so let's epoxy that guy in. Like I said, uh, you know, one thing, if you get this close enough or uh, like I could switch out the, the posts if I really wanted to. I don't even think, it doesn't even need glue. It's a pretty good, I did a pretty good job on that tenon. I don't even think it needs glue. Look at that. That's awesome. Definitely making one for home. Okay, so let's let's see if this this shelf liner stuff does anything. If it adds any benefit. <clears throat> mm. Let's see here. I don't know. That doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot of anything above and beyond just what this thing. Well, it's better than this. It's definitely better than that. Better than nothing. Eh, it, it could work. I mean, this thing isn't really moving around that much anyway. What do you guys think? Let's see what you guys are saying. Does the turning create any heat in the blank? Um, it could, uh, depending. Uh, the mini paddle mixers, actually, good, good point. Let me get a link for you guys, because those things are really awesome. Um, I got them on Amazon. Let me go grab a, a, an affiliate link for you guys. Because I, I just bought them, so I can just pull up my, my history. Get you a direct link to it. And I'll put this link into the... What the heck's going on here? Go, into the show notes as well, so it's always there. I think, you can, I think the chat pulls up anyway. There we go. Trippy hippie. <laughs> I know. No, the pen, it just, pens are quicker than, than larger projects for me. And I don't, I don't turn particularly fast. Like other people can turn a pen like 30 minutes sometimes. Maybe an hour at the most. I like to talk and mess around. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna, oh, I wish I had, I used to have silver Sharpies. They were great. Do I still have them somewhere? Hmm. I'll just try to use a black Sharpie and then I'm just gonna 
kind of cut oh there's my oh, there's my good sharpie i found it found it guys yeah that'll work so i have a, a, a chamfer on there and i don't want to uh I want to make sure that this thing's on the base part, not not going up into the chamfer. Don't move. Probably an easier way to do this. That's okay. I always kind of trim it up. I'm off. All right, that ought to be. Yeah, that worked. I can see that. So what, uh, I think, I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm just going to spray a little bit of the, the like contact adhesive stuff, spray adhesive onto the base of this thing. Not I do. That's good enough. It's a little wonky, but it should work. So I, I think I think the easiest way is to spray it on there, but it's easier to take this away and just spray it. So I'm gonna use just kind of like a low, like the 45, I think is what it is. Yeah, the general purpose 45 spray adhesive. And if I remember correctly, you kind of spray it on, let it sit for a second, and then, I don't know, oh my God, the instructions are require a microscope to read. Let's see here. Uh, directions shake can there we go yeah okay so like one second 10 seconds to like five minutes it, it's open so what i'm going to do is just Wish I had a paper towel holder. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the ground, spray it. Let it sit for a couple seconds and then we'll we'll stick it on there. It's pretty simple stuff. You could get you know super technical with it if you wanted, but I think this is probably gonna work just fine. Made Austin Powers happy today. Heck yeah. Oh man. Oh, we'll just, like I said, we'll wait just a couple seconds here. It kind of sets up a little bit, and I think it's like open for like, I think what the can was saying for like five minutes. Um, you can kind of let it just sit there. And you could spray both sides, and that'll give you even better bond. I don't really care if this thing kind of falls off because I kind of. I still think I want to look into a different type of pad just to satisfy my curiosity to see how it works, you know, um, because I, I want to put one of these things that are in our house. I want to make another one. And so I'd rather know the best option <laughs> you know, than just a okay option. All right, that ought to be good. Let's see, do I have a... Give it some pressure.
And it's, like I said, I don't even think this thing needs glue. Maybe the more times I, yeah, okay. Now that I've kind of put it in and out a few times, let's just put a little dab of uh, CA glue on there. Cause I don't, it doesn't need to be like some kind of crazy super bond, you know? So what I'm gonna do, I got a medium thick CA glue. I'm just gonna put a few drops on just to kind of hold it in place. Put a little bit on. And that ought to do just fine. That didn't really work. I should have put it on the inside probably. Still got some on the out on the top of this thing. That's okay. Utilitarian. All right. Not too bad. Oh, that works great. It's heavy enough, like I said, that, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. Even if it did slide around a little bit, it would still like work. And you can even rip them. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with this thing. Although with the paper towels on, you can't even really see the thing. <laughs> you can see the base, I guess. So the main thing is you need to make sure that you're you're seeing or, or, or the, like the outside of the the base. That's kind of the money part. Um, let me let me scoot you guys back actually, because I'm looking at it from over here, just to kind of give you some ideas, some thoughts about you know, because I'm I'm. What I want to do is I want to make a, a kind of a clear base. And so here's another shot of it kind of, I think maybe, you know, how you would actually see it oftentimes, you know? So your paper towels are going to kind of cover the thing quite a bit, especially like a brand new, that's not even a brand new roll. The new ones are like, you know, 30 times as big as they used to be. So it's going to kind of cover it on a, with a brand new roll. So you're not going to see a whole lot on the base. But when it starts kind of, you know, getting a little bit lower, then you can kind of see in. So I don't know. I don't know if it's worth the trouble considering the visibility that you have, especially with the new paper towel roll, to, to do something other than just make the outside of this thing kind of look nice. I don't know. Because technically it's always going to be covered, so I'm not sure about the clear with things in it. Like if you did clear and had things that were like on the outsides, that might be a better way to go with this thing. I don't know. I don't know. The green, yeah, I gotta be honest, I think I might start, I might make some uh, just green pen blanks um, I, I realize that in most cases for like kit pens, they're not going to be particularly useful, but I could totally see those things being used as a, a bespoke pen. So I might have to kind of think about that. I, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I like that green though. So anyway, guys, I hope this was fun. Um, again, all you need to make that is a one and a half inch PVC pipe. And then, you know, I just went down to Home Depot and got myself, this is a six inch sewer drain. Uh, and you could, you could do whatever you want. They do make a five inch PVC pipe. It's a little bit harder to find five inch. Four inch would work probably. Um, might be a little bit kind of weird. And I, what I was really going for is I really wanted a heavy base. So six inch was kind of the way to go for me. Um, but that's all you need. I, I, this mold is ready to go for the next one. Um, I'm definitely, I'm going to make another one of these things because, you know, overall, the casting is quick and there's nothing difficult about the casting necessarily. And then the turning part, I mean, you just need to make sure that you get that, the one and a half inch, you need to fit that to the base. And then you can do whatever you want to the top. I mean, you could do nothing pretty much, pretty much. I did like the minimum possible turning on this entire pro. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? 
Uh, one thing I was going to do is put in some uh, little lines, some, some grooves on the side. Dang, I forgot. On the next one, I'll have to do that on the next one. So, I think it's a pretty easy project. I think, um, I don't know, it, it's a little bit of an investment in resin uh, for something like this. That's the only drawback I would maybe say. Uh, but it's a super fun, super easy project, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast making it. So I don't know what we're doing next week. Um, I'm not sure if... I, oh, well, I have a couple ideas. I've been working on a couple of, of things for, for Dunkin' Junk ideas, um, but I'll have to decide for, the, for, for sure what we're doing next week sometime this week. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this thing come together. It was pretty cool. Uh, next week, we'll be back. We'll do some resin casting. It'll be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. That's not too bad. Two hours? Got that thing, two, two pieces kind of turned. Had a, had a tear out. I don't know, not too bad. Yeah, maybe the Holy Grail pin. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I, I don't know if I have all the stuff that I need for that yet, like like on hand. Yeah, I'll have to, that's, that's one of the things on the list for sure though. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Uh, I will post a, a short and a reel on Instagram, but a short on, on YouTube. Um, just doing the, you know, gluing the, the blank to the, the glue block. It's not a big deal, but that'll be, you, know, you can look for that uh, probably later today. And I think that's about it, guys. So thank you for everybody joining the fun. Thank you to Mamie for the super chat. I appreciate that. And I think that's about it. So have a great night, guys, and I'll see you on the next stream.